Um, I've been trying something new. So, um, honestly, I've really missed doing uh, workshops in person. I miss making drums with people. I miss making medicine bags and dream catchers and rattles and all of those wonderful things. So, um, I am working uh, alongside um, some wonderful women uh, to support the community. And um, we're doing some um, online uh, workshops. And depending on how it goes, uh, I may transition to do a few workshops uh, online as opposed to in person because, of course, now we can't really do that in person um and and it sucks but you gotta you gotta work with what you got so um we'll see how it goes if it goes really well then uh the first one i'll be doing online it will be the medicine bags so fingers crossed i hope it goes really well uh so far the first day went really well so the first day i was just sharing teachings and so um i know there was a few ladies who weren't able to make it yesterday to the teachings that we did online so um i was just going to review a little bit of teachings of course i'm not going to be able to go as in depth into the teachings just because of course i only have an hour here um but uh if anyone has questions who um, is joining that workshop just let me know um, and I, I'd be glad to follow up with them but um, of course I always like to start in a good way by acknowledging the land upon which we stand because if you don't know where you are then you don't know where you're going so this is the home of the Treaty 7 people the home of the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai and Bagani, Sarsi Dene from Tsutsuna and the Stony Nakota from Morley which includes Chiniki, Bears Paw and Wesley First Nations. We're also walking in the footsteps of Métis Region 3 which is is why I proudly wear my Métis sash to honor that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Um, I am Cree, Anishinaabe, and Métis from Muskeg Lake Cree Nation, which is in Saskatchewan in Treaty 6 territory. But uh, even though I'm a visitor here, this has been my home for um, so many years. Uh, I, I have left and then come back so many different times. There's just an energy that keeps me here. It does feel like home to me. And so I really appreciate just the land. I appreciate the connections out here. I appreciate the elders and the knowledge keepers and the different nations and their stories and just how deeply we connect. And it's such a blessing to live here in Mohinstas. You know, there's a power here. And um, for anyone who's lived here for a long period of time or who's been drawn back here, uh, it's it's something special. There's something really, really special about this place. And I think every every place has an energy, but this place definitely, um, this is part of my growth. This is part of my energy and this is my home. This is my community. And community is what you make it. And so even though uh, there's not a lot of people from my reserve here, other than of course some random family members that I bump into every so often, I'm like, oh my God, you're my cousin. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, including some really unexpected places where I'm going to teach and then all someone's like, oh my gosh, your mom's gray eyes, so am I. And then we figure out we're cousins. So it's really, it's really interesting and strange, but wonderful at the same time. Um, but I think home and family is where you make it and we are so interconnected that just because we're not blood doesn't mean we're not family and so i am so blessed and honored to call so many people my sisters and my family um and my aunties and you know grandmothers and uh, brothers and it's just a blessing to have met the people that I have met and you know to be close to the people that I am and um, You feel full when you really build community in a meaningful way when you're able to share your stories and you know really deeply connect and so I'm very humbled to be here. So to welcome everybody into the circle today, uh, I wanted to share the Cree welcome song. Traditionally, when we sing songs, we sing in rounds of four to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel. Uh, but this song is a little bit different. Uh, we sing it in rounds of three, and that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning, there's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to really honor each other for those different and really embrace those differences because each and every one of us has a story to tell each and every one of us has incredible cultures that we bring to the table and incredible stories and incredible gifts that we have can share with each other and it's really about honoring all of those gifts as they come to the table it's not about you know uh, making fun of things that we don't understand but trying to embrace them so that we can deeply understand them um, because I think that's where we find um, that resonance within ourselves is when we really deeply share those those stories and those connections. And so um, 
And this song honors that. It honors everyone in the circle. It teaches us to stand in the circle without judgment, but with open hearts and open minds. Because you'll never know when you're going to learn some, uh, something or when you're going to share something with someone that um, might resonate with them and change their life. And so it's really about acknowledging that. Uh, that community and that connection that we each have with each other. So Mia Sin, which is the Cree welcome song. I always honor the Nakahau family for keeping this song alive for their from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation. Um, because for so many years we couldn't. <laughs> it was, I am so blessed to live in the time that I live in now um, because we're able to share our culture and our stories. We're able to wear our regalia. We're able to, you know, um, not only share it amongst ourselves, but with everyone. And that was the true spirit of the treaty was, you know, that mutual respect and the mutual understanding, the mutual sharing. Because when we're, you know, explaining a lot more of our medicines and a lot more of the traditions and just exactly how deep they go, it really benefits everyone. It benefits all of mankind, all Canadians, all people, um, everyone on Turtle Island. And so it's a blessing to be able to share those things again, because they were almost lost. And so I'm so reminded and humbled every time I do share um, that, you know, these are gifts. These are gifts to be able to share. And I don't want them to die with me. This is why I need to share them fully and completely. And so Mia Sin, it honors that. It honors that past. And it reminds us that that was in the past, but we need to move forward. We can't just ignore it, but we need to learn from it and grow from it so it never happens again. And so uh, it's really about embracing our future generations and making sure we leave a really beautiful example for them, but also acknowledging that we're all part of that circle and we all need to go together. We all need to heal together and grow forward and move to forward together in a good way. So miasin doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. I'm gonna have a quick sip of water. <clears throat> so this is miasin, the Cree welcome song. Me a sin, me a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a Welcome to the circle today, everybody. So um, I'm going to talk uh, about my medicines, but also I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of a history. So when I teach medicine bags, I talk um, about the hides in the directions um, under OG Cree teaching. So, um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about them today. Um, just kind of it's a precursor to the medicine bag making and the drum making that I do and the rattle making that I do. Um, just because I think it's something that I actually haven't shared before um, in the live stream. And I know it's something that uh, some of the people who are going to be making uh, medicine bags with me next week through this program um, are going to be needing that information. But not only that, um, it's so that 
you know, people who are curious about that information would have it as well. And um, when I make drums or dream catchers or um, rattles or medicine bags, um, I use four different kinds of hides. Well, sometimes with the dream catchers I do, sometimes I don't, sometimes I just kind of stick to uh, the lacing. But uh, the four different hides that I use are deer, elk, moose, and buffalo, one for each direction of the medicine wheel. Uh, and before I start, I always like to do that little disclaimer, like all of our teachings are going to be a little bit different. Um, I know in Blackfoot territory, they use a lot of elk, and that's kind of how they make drums. All of their drums are made with elk and that's their teaching. So the teachings that have been shared with me through um, some black men who do make drums. Um, I personally use the four different hides. When we're in Mohenstis in uh, Blackfoot territory, um, I never use bear in Blackfoot territory, but I have made bear drums on occasion with people who are Cree because, excuse me, in our teachings, that's okay. But like I said, in you have to respect where you are and <laughs> you have to know where you are and so out of you know respect uh, for the the seriousness um that it is to even wear something that has a bear on it or have anything made of bear hide um you you want to avoid kind of that con that conflict um so out of respect for you know the elders that i work with in the blackfoot community the knowledge keepers that i work with in the blackfoot community i don't use bear drums um in them uh, in and around um, those communities. So just a, just a teaching, but um, so I'm Cree. So um, I start in the east and I work my way to the um, south and then to the west and then to the north. Uh, if we were in Blackfoot territory, or sorry, <laughs> in Mohawk territory, we would go the other way around. So we would go to the east, to the north, to the south, and then to the west, um, or sorry, west and then south. I'm just not thinking today, <laughs> but um, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. It's important to understand and, you know, honor all of the different teachings that we have. This is why we have oral traditions and oral storytelling, because whatever's meant for us, we'll remember. And whatever's not, it's not going to resonate with us. It's not going to take up space in our brain. And that's OK. <laughs> you know, don't write things down. This is why it's oral traditions, oral history, because if it's meant for you, you will carry it forward. And that's awesome. That's a great thing. Um, and so just to start. I wanted to start in the east and um, when I look at my medicine wheel we break it down and it's all about balance. So in the east we have the element of fire which means in the west we have the element of water. It's that balance. We have um, grandfather son in the east because he's a big ball of fire so that makes sense that he's connected to fire and then in the west we have grandmother moon um, and she of course is connected to the water because she pushes the tides in and out um, and so this is that masculine and feminine energy it's not really a duality it's a balance and so it reminds us that we need that balance within each and every one of us and so I'm very, very thankful um, that we have that balance in each and every one of us. As a two-spirit woman, I have uh, an outward balance. And there's a lot of two-spirit people who have that outward balance and are able to help people find that balance within themselves. And I think that's really important. And it's a gift. This is why we're in a time where we have a lot more two-spirit people coming forward is because when two-spirit people step forward, it's because it's a time of healing. It's a time where our nations and all people need to come together to to, um, heal not only themselves but our communities in the world and so um, this is why it's a gift uh, in the east we also have our mind whereas we have our heart our emotions in the west um, we have uh, our childhood in the east our adulthood in the west so it's all about that balance um, and in the east on my medicine wheel when it comes to the hides I have elk and elk um, there are several stories around the elk but what is really remarkable about the elk is that's actually one of the first to move during the season so as things start to thaw out it starts to move along and starts to you know eat some of those dried fruits and things like that and starts to spread those seeds around in a very efficient manner <laughs> and um, the elk also is really intuitive so it can hear and sense fire coming and so it'll warn all of the animals if there's a forest fire coming it'll actually tamp out hot spots uh, before and after a forest fire which is really really incredible but um it reminds us about rebirth and renewal and sometimes things have to you know start from scratch sometimes those fires are necessary so that new life can emerge and new life can begin
especially in forests, that the forests are very, very thick. We need to burn them down and restart. There's a lot of saplings that need a fresh start. And it's really about acknowledging and understanding that sometimes this is the world's way of just cleansing um, and starting fresh, starting anew. And the, uh, the elk know that. <laughs> so uh, when we look at elk, it's all about new beginnings. It's about honoring our mind. It's about uh, oftentimes like students are often drawn to elk because it really does help with like mental clarity and focus and direction. So um, this is why it's with childhood too, because children, uh, their brains are like spongy. They like have to absorb all of the information. So you actually learn more than you're ever going to learn in your whole life when you're a child. Um, the medicine that we have there is sweet grass. It smells so good. So this is sweet grass. Um, sweet grass is really wonderful for uh, our mind. It's for concentration. Um, it's really good for learning disabilities or um, my kids use it. They they have autism, my boys do. And so whenever they're, um, you know, spinning and unable to kind of calm their mind, we'll smudge with sweet grass and it will really just calm their mind and they'll have better days. Um, Whereas if they're more emotional, then we'll smudge with sage and then they'll have a better day. So it's just, it's really about asking the universe for what you need. And those medicines are there for what you need. Um, it also helps with making decisions. This is why it's in a braid of three. And every strand has seven blades of sweetgrass uh, in it um, to remind us to honor those seven generations behind, those seven generations forward. And remind ourselves that we are somebody's ancestor. So we better leave a good example. <laughs> and, uh, if we're ever having a problem making a decision, all we have to do is, you know, really sit with the medicine, burn it, ask for advice, and remember our seven generations behind is the decision that I'm making today going to honor all of the sacrifices that my ancestors have made and make them proud? And then we think seven generations forward. Um, what am I doing to leave that lasting legacy in a better world for my future generations? And so when we make those decisions and we burn sweetgrass to help us with that guidance, we make way better decisions, honestly. And so that's in the East, elk and sweetgrass. And on my medicine wheel, it is the color yellow. And again, these are just my teachings. Um, this is why I encourage people to go and talk to different elders, whether they be Blackfoot or Dene or Stoney or uh, Mohawk or other Cree, Cree to Cree, we have different teachings. <laughs> Anishinaabe to Anishinaabe, we have different teachings. So it's really about um, finding what, what works for you. All right, so the next medicine we have, we're gonna go to the south really quickly. That's our physical body, it connects us to the physical earth. It's really about grounding. It's about um, honoring the connection that we have to mother earth, honoring the connection that we have to our body. Um, we have cedar, which uh, teaches us about that reciprocal relationship that we have with nature. And so we breathe with cedar. When we exhale, she inhales and vice versa. Cedar trees have been used for so many different things. Um, the medicine in the cedar is amazing. So it's uh, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. Uh, it has an antihistamine in it. It has a numbing agent in it. So if you chew on it and put it against your gums, if you have a toothache, it'll actually numb your gums. Um, actually, <laughs> my uh, all, all four of my kids have a metal in their mouths right now because they're all got braces. It's been an expensive year. <laughs> but, um, because they all have braces, my little guy, he was really complaining because his gums were really hurting. He was really, really sore. So uh, I just kind of boiled some cedar and we packed it up around his gums and it numbed his gums and he felt so much better. Although he was kind of gagging because the taste is pretty terrible, <laughs> but it worked like a charm. So um, whenever I have a cough, cool, even like that little tickle in my back of my, at the back of my throat, I'll drink that. And I actually haven't been full on sick for almost four years. So it's it's been awesome. It's been really great. So. I swear by cedar. I use a lot of it. You can boil it, put it in your bath. Um, it's really good for your skin. It's really good for uh, sore muscles. It just loosens them. Uh, you can grind it up and make like an ointment with it. Um, I use bear grease, but you can use coconut oil. And it'll actually get rid of eczema or any sort of rash, blisters. It, it, it helps everything heal. It's just generally your body medicine. It reminds us to always, um, you know, honor the relationship that we have with the earth because everything that we need is there for us with the earth. If we make sure we only take what we need and we always give something back, we're always honoring that relationship that we have, you know, that give and that take um, and that reciprocation, right? And if we're not taking more than our share, because if we take more than our share, then somebody else is going to get less. And so it reminds us that we have to be balanced. Um, the hide that we have there 
is buffalo. Uh, buffalo, I, I have it in the south of my medicine wheel. Other people have it up north, but I have it down in the south. Um, because down in the south, the buffalo reminds us of that connection that we have to the earth because it teaches us how to walk on the earth and it teaches us how to honor the earth. So when we are uh, watching the buffalo, it actually looks down and it knows exactly where to step so it doesn't trample the plants, which is pretty amazing. And so we would know if we look down, uh, if you're walking across a field or if you're walking in the forest, there are always places for you to put your feet that you're not going to trample certain plants. There's some plants that are there and they're, you're okay to step on, but others, you have to walk around them. And there's places for us. The buffalo taught us that. And also the buffalo teaches us about perseverance because the buffalo knows that if there's a problem, you face it head on and you can go right through it. That's why buffaloes walk straight through the storm because they know if they go through it, they're going to get to the other side faster. Oh, yeah, that's a really uh, good, yes. Don't have too much cedar. The thing is, like, if you're actually, like, don't physically eat the cedar because it'll make you barf. It's gross. But if you have it in tea, it will only saturate it to the point where, you know, it's it's tolerable. So this is why cedar is really good. But in moderation, everything's in moderation, right? But certain kinds, like, even when I use, um, well, I use red cedar. This is red cedar. Um, and I know white cedar is a little bit more strong, but with the white cedar, as long as you're just using it in tea and you're not actually chewing it and swallowing it, you're okay. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know I actually sw chewed and swallowed cedar once and it was, little, it was, it was a bad time. I threw up a lot after that, but if you're just chewing on it and sucking on it, as opposed to actually swallowing it and ingesting it, because it's so uh, fibrous, it's really, really, really hard to digest. Um, although, uh, one elder does recommend it for if you have an ulcer. Um, when you swallow it, it actually like neutralizes the stomach acid and that helps you throw up the stomach acid that's actually damaging you. Yeah, something really interesting. I always learn new things about cedar all the time. Actually, I just learned about the, uh, last year I actually just learned about the antihistamine properties of it, which is why whenever my son gets hay fever now, we are uh, using a lot of cedar tea for that. And then he hasn't actually missed a day of work since we've discovered it's antihistamine. So, boom. Uh, all right, back to the uh, buffalo. Um, the buffalo has uh, teaches us really deeply how to connect to the land and it'll have to only take what we need because even though there's this huge herd of buffalo they're not devastating you know fields and forests they're actually walking gently on the land and when they eat they're actually not ripping the roots of a plant out of the ground they're like the best lawnmowers ever because they leave the roots in the ground um, because they know that it's going to grow back um oh i'm not sure i just use the sap for like band-aids I don't actually eat it I wouldn't eat it because I mean if the leaves taste that bad <laughs> but um yeah the buffalo actually has an enzyme in its um saliva that helps plants grow back so not only is it leaving the roots in the ground but it's actually giving something back to those plants so that they'll grow again and they know that they don't take more than what they need or else a it will slow them down and b there won't be enough for everybody else and so they teach us how to live in harmony with nature they teach us about that reciprocation about leaving the roots in the ground about how to harvest in a good way and so um that's it's a blessing to be able to learn that from the buffalo because everything that we've learned we've learned from nature before we've learned it from books and each other we've learned it from nature and so i think that's something to really you know honor that um so that's buffalo in the south that's our physical body it's our adolescence so oftentimes if we're looking for you know, to find ourselves, um, we'll be drawn to Buffalo because it will help us with that grounding and really deeply connecting to, you know, our, our being, our core and who we are. Um, and this is what we need to do in our adolescence. All right, the next medicine that we have, and we're gonna go to the West. Uh, so I had already mentioned that the West was connected to water. It was connected to the, the women's medicine. Um, it's connected to Grandmother Moon. And so we have sage there. I'm only going to show off a couple kinds of sage. So this sage is white sage or desert sage. Um, I learned all about this sage when I lived in Arizona for, you know, four years because I made some bad decisions in my 20s. But 
Uh, this is, if you look at it, it looks like little straws. So if you're ever stuck in the middle of the desert and you are wicked thirsty in the dry season, um, go to a cactus. Uh, don't crack it open because you will kill it and it won't be able to provide sustenance to anything else or anyone else or you if you get stuck and you need to go back for a drink. Um, but all you do is you twist off a spine, pull it out and it'll make a little hole. Then you take a sage stem, which looks like little straws, pop it in like a juice box and drink that. It'll actually filter it, which is really, really wonderful. Um, things that I learned when I was there from beautiful Choctaw and Cherokee elders and some Apache elders as well. Um, I also learned that <laughs> when you're getting eaten alive by sand fleas, put some sage on your ankles. <laughs> so, because man, the sand fleas are brutal out there. Um, but also uh, there's pockets of sage, uh, or pockets of water underneath um, the white sage or the desert sage during the monsoon season and they protect it. So if you're ever like just dying of thirst, that's the best time to get it. It's really good. Um, but the sage that we have more in abundance here in the prairies is buffalo sage. Um, and so I'm gonna just peel off the leaves here because this is what we're gonna be smudging with today. And so buffalo sage is also known as buffalo grass. You can always tell it because of the white leaves. Um, and I'm just gonna scrunch that up and roll it and what's really cool about it is it doesn't smell like much until you roll it and then it unlocks the the oils in the leaves and it smells amazing grab a little bit more for smudging so again this is just buffalo sage which is abundant in the spring summer and parts of the fall here you pretty much pick it every season other than winter and depending on when you pick it, depends on kind of like what it smells like. It smells a little bit fresher in the spring, a little bit more minty in the summer, and then um, a little bit more earthy in the fall when you pick it, but still quite minty. It smells good. <laughs> I love the smell of it. Uh, the medicine, or sorry, the um, hide that we have there is moose. Uh, moose is directly connected to um, the water because <laughs> the moose, uh, both the male and female moose have full racks of antlers. So it's about that balance of masculine and feminine. Um, also the moose is very buoyant. So it <laughs> swims really, really well. It eats underwater plants. Uh, it tends to move more uh, at night during a full moon because um, it, it just is illuminated by that. And so when we use it, um, I, my teachings behind it is it's the women's medicine. So if a woman is on her moon time, there are some teachings that say that a woman can't drum when she's on her moon time, but in my teachings, um, if it's your own personal drum, that's yours, it's connected to you, that's your baby, you can drum it at any time. Uh, if you're borrowing someone else's drum, um, if it's a moose drum, that's the women's medicine, so you won't overwhelm it because the moose is used to that, that feminine energy, it's used to moon time energy, it's used to the moon energy, and so um, it's a blessing to be able to share my moose drums with women who are on their moon time when we are in ceremony. And so um, it's a gift, but those are my teachings around the moose. Um, so the moose is about, you know, our emotions. It's about honoring our heart medicine, honoring our connection to community. It reminds us to replenish ourselves. So um, people who are caregivers or parents or um, mentors or teachers um, who give a lot to the community and sometimes forget to fill up their own cup, forget to ask for help when they need it. Um, it reminds us that sometimes we we have to do that. We have to refill ourselves because if you give and give and give, there's not going to be anything left. So you have to be able to replenish yourself. Even Grandmother Moon, she replenishes herself. She gives and gives and gives and gives until she's gone and then she just refills. And so it reminds us that sometimes we need to refill. Um, and the moose helps us to do that. The moose reminds reminds us don't don't run on empty you know just like our body is like a car we need to feed it our our heart is the same way you know we need to feed our heart we need to feel you know loved and appreciated and cared for um and so it's okay to ask for that those things and it's okay to honor ourselves it teaches us how to love ourselves as well so that we're not over giving of ourselves and so that's the moose medicine um and then the last medicine in the north is 
Um, well, I have a couple of medicines actually. So normally I talk about tobacco, um, tobacco being creator's medicine. So it's not actually a physical medicine. We actually use it to praise. So we use it to give to someone to say thank you from our heart to their heart. Uh, we use it to give to elders or knowledge keepers or um, drummers, singers, storytellers to say thank you for keeping those songs and stories alive and for sharing of um, those stories with us. Um, but also we give it back to the earth whenever we, you know, pick traditional medicines or lay down a garden. Um, I have, to, <laughs> I forgot like half my garden, I didn't put um, tobacco in this year and it didn't go well. But the one patch that I actually did put tobacco in and like on my back where I put tobacco, tons of stuff grew. So gardening, tobacco, it's a good thing. Um, but also it teaches us not to take tobacco in because it's not meant for us. But um, when we have it in a pipe, we are actually blowing it down our bodies or bringing it over ourselves, but not actually inhaling it because it's not meant for us. It's a spiritual medicine. It's a symbolic medicine. So it teaches us about faith and teaches us about the air. <clears throat> and if we are in a ceremony where we have to use all four medicines, we'll use this instead. I'm going to just show this. So this is red willow bark. And in the winter is about the best time to pick it because in the winter, um, it's, um, you'll notice that it actually turns vibrant red. It's because all of the medicines are actually deeply in the roots, but of course you don't want to rip up the roots because then the plant can grow back fast. But um, in the winter when the ground freezes, it actually pushes all of the medicines out of the roots and into the branches. This is why red willow is the most vibrant color red in the winter, and that's the perfect time to pick it. And so, you know, you'll clip it. And traditionally we would have women's ceremonies where we would shave it and drum and sing and smudge, but times have changed and um, I put mine in my blender now. <laughs> it's, it takes a lot less time, but I mean, we're still smudging and drumming and singing along with it. It's just a little bit louder singing over the blender. So, <laughs> But it's uh, great. It's, um, it's not only uh, really good for uh, blood clots, so it's the same stuff that's in aspirin, so it's really good for headaches, aches and pains, anything that's sore. Um, it's also really good for just thinning the blood. So if you have high cholesterol, it's one of those natural things you can have a little bit every day and it just cleanses your system. Um, so it, it uh, thins your blood on the inside of your body, but also clots it on the outside of your body. So if you um, end up getting a scrape or like I did a few years ago on Nose Hill, I bailed and I cut my knee open and it was bleeding everywhere and it just wouldn't stop bleeding. And my son like started losing it because if he sees blood, he's like, you're gonna die. I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'll be fine. But um, uh, I put some of it, because of course I bring all my medicines with me, it's shaved, and then I put it on um, my knee, and it actually just stopped bleeding right away. It just caught it on contact, which was awesome. But unlike cotton that gets stuck in wounds, which is super disgusting, uh, it actually rinses clean. So you can just like spray it when you get home, and um, it'll just come right out of the wound. And mine was like almost completely sealed off. It was a little raw, but it wasn't gushing blood anymore and the blood stopped. So I swear by it. <laughs> like, I love it when our traditional medicines are proven by science so and proven by experience. Uh, the hide that we have there is deer. Um, deer is the lightest of the medicines. So it's the thinnest hide, which means it's the easiest to color um, or to dye. And so all of the deer hide that I have is in like really vibrant colors. It's really beautiful. Um, and it's such a gift to be able to share those. Uh, but the story that I knew behind deer is that was actually one of the first four legged. It was a gift from creator. So when creator made the world, um, of course it was just water everywhere. And so all the fish were swimming around and then uh, creator made the air. And so the fish started to jump out to breathe. And so as the fish started touching the air and going back in the water, creator thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I created something that was connected to the air? And so the fish kind of took off and splashed down, took off and splashed down, and then they became the birds and the birds started soaring around looking for a place to land and they started getting tired and creator knew okay well I should probably create somewhere for them to land and so the turtle came out and um, well there's a whole story attached to how the turtle became Turtle Island but eventually the turtle got covered with birth and became Turtle Island and the birds started touching down and taking off touching down and taking off and creator thought wouldn't it be amazing and there, there was something connected to the earth and so as they touched down and took off they became the deer and the bighorn sheep and the goat and the gazelle on the four continent or four areas of the world 
And so those were actually the first animals to be used to make drums because of the lightness of the skin and the easiness um, for uh, to work with, but also because they touch uh, creator the highest of any of the four-legged. And so that's the story that I know and why they're connected to the air. And so with um, deer, when we use it, we use it for meditation, we use it for um, prayer, for connection with creator, for finding our own um, spirit and our own path. Um, from a spiritual perspective, but also, you know, honoring our ancestors um, and really deeply connecting with them, uh, our intuition and those things that, you know, we can't prove because we're in a let, like prove it society, but you can't prove some of those things. And so this is why deer is up there is that reminder of faith. Um, so yeah, those are the teachings behind those medicines. Usually I go in depth. That was like <laughs> probably about a third of the time that I usually take. But it was a quickie. It was a quickie. Um, so hopefully that was enough information so that uh, the people who are making medicine bags with me um, with eFry will have that information for them. Awesome. And so um, I'm going to start with a smudge. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. It's whatever feels good to you. Uh, the teachings around the smudge bowl. He has all four directions are in the smudge bowl. Um, the bowl itself represents water. I have a shell. Some people have a hollowed out rock. Some people have um, a little cast iron skillet or um, oops. <laughs> sometimes people will have like uh, little ceramic plates or bowls or even just like sand in a, in a cup or sand in a box. Um, like I said, it's no, not right or wrong. It's unique to you. It's about how do you, you know, ask for those things that you need? How do you cleanse? How do you purify? How do you pray? Um, a lot of people get really uh, nervous around the word prayer, but all prayer is is intention. So it's setting your intention. It's letting go of the things that you don't need and asking for the things that you do need. And so the shell in mine is uh, water because it holds everything. Um, when we put the medicine in the bowl, no matter what the medicine is we're using, it represents earth because all of that medicine grows from the earth. When we light it on fire, it represents fire, which is our connection to the mind. Um, and then uh, the smoke going up represents the air. It's our connection to spirit. So those are the four directions. So again, there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever feels good to you. And I always use matches if you have a lighter. Um, try not to put your lighter directly on the med medicines. Um, just use a stick or a stem to light the medicines. And I always find it with my hand. Don't blow on it because your breath is your life and your life is precious, so don't waste it for anybody. So the first thing I do is I rub my hands, get rid of anything that I'm carrying. I'm bringing it over my body four times. Down to the four directions in my body. I smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. I smudge my ears so I can listen twice as much as I speak. And so I can be open to hear all of the messages that Creator sends me. I smudge my eyes so I can see clearly, I give thanks for my vision this lifetime so I can see all of the beauty that surrounds me. I smudge my nose so I can smell danger and cookies and fresh baked bread. I smudge my mouth so I speak only true and kind words that are helpful and benefit people. Ask yourself, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it kind? If it's none of those things, probably not respectful. Don't say it. Don't do it. It's a good rule of thumb for my kids. <laughs> It's much my throat because I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime. As an activist, I give voice to the voiceless, but also I'm very thankful for my singing voice because I know that's a gift that Creator's gifted me and I'm very thankful for it. Every day I honor that voice. It's much my lungs so I breathe good, clean air, ask for healing for my asthma. It's much my heart so I remember to be kind and compassionate and show unconditional love. To all those in my life, my family, my friends, people I have yet to meet, and also to be kind and gentle with myself and show myself unconditional love. Because sometimes we're the worst on ourselves. <laughs> so 
nourish my stomach, so all of the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. My fem or my womanhood, because I'm very thankful to be a woman in this lifetime. I'm a two-spirit woman, so I do embody both of those traits. But this lifetime, I am a mother, and I'm very thankful for the vessel to be able to provide me that gift. I smudge my shoulders and my back. Oh, so all of the responsibilities I can carry in a good way, with grace and humility. I smudge my arms and my hands so I can do good work that creators put me here to do. Hands a little extra. I'm very thankful to be an artist this lifetime. I smudge my legs so I walk this red road in a good way. It's the road of um, Aboriginal spirituality. It's called the red road. And I smudge my feet so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth, treading lightly upon her and honoring her with every step. Um, my feet aren't bright red this week, so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> and then, if there's anyone that you want to send extra love to, prayers to, maybe they're in your thoughts, in your heart, in your mind, you just want to send them that appreciation. Maybe there's someone you're struggling with and you haven't spoken to them in a while and they've just really been on your thought, in your heart and on your mind. Send them that love, that appreciation. If there's someone that is struggling for healing, whether it be emotional healing, spiritual healing, mental healing, or physical healing, just send them that love as well. And then when you're all done, oh, if you have anywhere else in your body that needs a little extra love, so my hips are always a little sore because I've had multiple hip surgeries. So I honor my hips and hope that they heal a little bit better. Um, yeah, and then if you're all good, you just say uh, thank you or hi hi, miigwech, merci, gracias, yes, yeah, however you say thank you in your language because your language is important. The language of your ancestors is important because it's a piece of you, it's a part of you. And so this is why it's important to acknowledge it. You know, it doesn't mean you have to carry all that trauma with you. It means you take the good stuff, you honor and recognize the bad stuff that you have survived through, and you know that it doesn't define you. And so it's a gift. Um, that being said, I am going to share the Four Directions song. Oh, and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about this drum. So um, I was going to be auctioning off the drum, um, doing kind of like a silent auction sort of thing. But uh, there's a lot of people that actually asked if I could do a raffle for it. And so um, starting tomorrow, I'm actually going to have like a big board behind me and I'm going to be selling off numbers um, for $20 a piece uh, or um, three for 50. I think that would be nice. And then uh, at the end, hopefully by the, well, I don't even, what's the date? By the 15th, <laughs> so um, not this week, but the following week, I'll just do a live draw for the drum. And so it's just a stunning drum. So again, this drum is deer. Uh, it's a 12 inch drum and the drumstick is red willow and it's um, red deer hide on one side, kind of like this beautiful sable brown color uh, deer hide on the other side. My stitching is phenomenal. So <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but all of it is hand stitched and all of the stitches are on the outside. So you can see how, how I didn't mess up, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> Um, and then of course we have deer, or sorry, wool on the inside and it's nice and beautiful. It just sounds so good with it. It resonates so well. Um, the painting is by Sam Baghetti and he just does incredible, incredible work. And it's just such an honor to be able to know him and to be able to work with him. And so this is the second drum of mine he's painted. He's actually working on another one now as well. Um, but it's just a blessing. So if you're wanting to connect with him, um, so yeah, that would be great. But in the meantime, tomorrow I will be putting up those numbers. It'll just be like one to a hundred. Uh, and then you can, um, you know, pay for your number and we'll put it in, we'll check it off and I'll uh, update it every day. And on the 15th, we will do a draw. So yay, that'll be exciting. 15th or the 14th? Let me see. Hold on. I might say the 14th. No, the 15th. I was right. I was right the first time. I'm losing my mind. So uh, the song that I'm going to share is the Four Directions song, When They Aho. And um, When They Aho is, I actually learned it as the Four Directions song. And then later on, I found out it was actually called the Cherokee Morning Song, which I, I guess would make sense because the sun rises and then it follows, um, you know, the earth uh, through the different directions. And it, as it sets, it reminds us that that darkness 
it doesn't define us, but you know, the dawn will be the next day. So never to get overwhelmed um, and know that everything just goes on cycles. And so we have to recognize those cycles if we want to conquer them and go past them, grow past them. Um, aw, thanks, Steph. I love you. I miss you. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this is the beautiful Four Directions from Honestly, I'm really in love with it. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. I'm like, I want to bid on it, <laughs> but that wouldn't be fair. So this is When They Are Full, the Four Directions song. And in it, um, I can hear the four winds going through. And so uh, it's just about honoring every phase of our life, honoring every direction, honoring all of the elements, um, honoring the medicine wheel. Uh, and the song helps us to do that. So this is when they are home. Um, I think it was originally done by Ulali and Robbie Robertson. And it's a blessing. It's a beautiful song for a beautiful drum. teachings took a while but um, I wanted to share the creator song because that's been in my head <laughs> all day mm. <clears throat> and so um, this song this song is really special to me because um, when I first learned it I learned it from a good friend my son uh, for singing um, on um, her uh, their album and so it was really a blessing to be able to share to be able to sing and be able to bring uh, my son's voice in on it too which was just amazing but um this song just really resonated when it when she first sang it I was like I I know that song I need to learn it properly um and it just came to me really really quickly uh, and it was just such a blessing to be gifted that song and so I went and I shared it with my great aunt um because she's in extended care right now and to be able to share it with her was was amazing because she loves to hear me drum and sing and she we love to talk about um you know the past and you know her history and how she misses that connection and it's it was lovely to be able to sing it but she started singing with me and i'm like auntie how do you know this song and she's like how do you know this song where did this how did you find this song this is our family song where did you find it and so it was just it was such a blessing and it brought me to tears because um, it's incredible how if we're on the right path, we can almost reclaim aspects of our, our you know, ancestry and aspects of ourselves that have been lost. And so it's really about healing and finding healing in unexpected places and accepting those gifts. And I always say, never say no to opportunities because you never know where they're going to lead you. Uh, so this is probably why I was so busy for the longest time because I never said no. You know, there'd be days where I was at several different events but everything had significance, everything had meaning, and I met such incredible people, and they kept leading me down, you know, wonderful paths, and so it's just a gift. Um, and this song was was part of that journey, and is part of that journey. And so this is the creator song, which is Creep. Yeah. 
7 to 12 is um, their home now. They've been home since uh, Monday. And so it's been a challenge trying to like get on the kids, making sure that, you know, they're doing their online classes. I'm not too worried about the girls, but my little guy, a little bit of an issue. Um, my eldest, of course, is at you know, University of Calgary. So he's fine. If he fails, that's his problem. <laughs> you know, that's going to cost him a lot of money. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and hi, Joy. So uh, this song is the mother's song, and uh, I was actually shared with it. My friend Lacey shared it with uh, me, and um, we did kind of like a song exchange. It was beautiful to be able to share those things with each other, and uh, this song also resonated with me. There was something in it that just, um, it grabbed my heart, and it held it. Um, and the song is about a mother calling out to her children, um, and they are calling back, but of course they drift further and further and further and further away. Um, and it reminds us that we have to have faith that they're going to be okay, even if they drift far, far from us. Um, unfortunately, a lot of parents didn't have the opportunity to parent um, because of the residential school, because of the 60s scoop, um, because of just the way that the foster care system is structured now. A lot of parents don't have that opportunity to really show their children how much they love them and to really watch them succeed and watch them grow. Um, we've kind of been dealt a pretty crappy hand, so this song is really about, um, you know, honoring, you know, that anguish that a parent feels when they have no control over where their child is going, um, that sense of loss, um, but that sense of hope at the same time. And so this is for all of the parents out there, um, especially ones that are having to deal with teenagers at home during COVID, so I <laughs> myself, um, but knowing that everything happens for a reason and we have to just trust that we can only give them the best that we have. And, you know, you can only do the best that you can with the tools that you have. And 
uh, so it can be a challenge. I'm a single mom, have been a single mom for a really long time, but I am so humbled and so blessed and so grateful every day I look at my kids, and um, I'm very thankful that the twins had come into my life, um, actually right before lockdown last year in February, and I've always known that I was going to have twins, uh, twin girls, and they just came to me in a different way, and so it's a blessing to have, you know, the next family, my two boys, my two girls, and just, um, you know, a sense of safety and belonging, and knowing that um, I can give them the best that they deserve, and that they're going to thrive and succeed, um, and so that's all we can do as parents. And so that's what this song really resonates with me, and I'm going to try not to cry when I sing it. <laughs> so this is the mother song.
Uh, so, uh, Chi Miigwech, everybody. I know that kind of went really quick. <laughs> so when I'm showing teaching, sometimes it's like really fast. Um, but I did want to share one more song just, yeah, just because I didn't really share as many songs this time, but it's very dry in my room. So <laughs> this song, um, I was going to do the, um, the Thunderbird song. Just because um, I've been thinking a lot about the Thunderbird and how those changes happen and sometimes they're not the easiest changes, sometimes they're violent, sometimes, you know, they challenge us and they remind us that everything happens for a reason and that we need to be able to honor it and really um, trust in that everything does happen for a reason and sometimes the biggest lessons they, that we learn, the hardest lessons that we learn, teach us so much about ourselves and how strong we are um, and the ability that we have to persevere and to move forward. And so, um, yeah, I've been really thinking about that a lot lately and just the challenges that, you know, everyone is facing. Um, but knowing that when we get through this, we're going to have a deeper appreciation for each other and a deeper appreciation for all of the gifts that we have in our lives. So this is the uh, Thunderbird song. And just, you know, listen to the Thunderbird because if it keeps kicking us in the butt, there's something we need to learn. <laughs> again and um, I'm gonna be doing up that raffle board tonight and I will post it with a couple live streams throughout the next few weeks um, and we will do the draw for this gorgeous beautiful amazing drum that I really kind of just still want to keep <laughs> I do I really want to keep it but I know it's not meant to keep um, on the 15th so not uh, next week but the week after that broadcast broadcast will be auctioning off this dirt raffling off this drum because it's a little bit more equitable to be able to do that and then that way the money is going um to more murder missing indigenous women events um it's going to more um events for you know the community which is super 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 important um the next biggest event that we have is coming up in february that is the uh, valentine's day memorial march for murdered missing indigenous women um and um, i coordinate that every year but um it gets bigger and bigger every year i'm hoping that we can actually gather in a meaningful way inside and if not the march will still happen in, uh, outside so um yeah. hi hi if you have any other questions shoot me a message, shoot me an email, shoot me a PM. Um, and hi, hi, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Uh, enjoy. If you have teenagers at home, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you deeply. So I uh, <laughs> love you all. We'll see you soon. Hi, hi. Chi Bye, all. <laughs>